G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a pastel pour for you today. And before I get started, I'm going to show you my previous pastel pour. This was Candyland. So she's dry now, dried beautifully. I don't know if I've shown you her before. Uh, but I really, really liked this half here with more of the the green with these pretty pink flowers showing through this much this bit here is a bit too pink I think the magenta really took over and the magenta and the pale blue made a purple as well which I wasn't that keen on so anyway I'm gonna go again so basically similar colors with the next pour I've taken the magenta out though so we'll see how that one goes and I'll show you a couple of other things before I get started I don't know, I don't think I've shown you this yet. That was my first um, balloon dip that's dry now. Come up really nice. Just uh, yellow and like a magenta and a purple on a white background. So that's that one. And then I thought I'll try with some blues and see how I go with that one. So this one has got navy and turquoise with the same yellowy center just to tie them in together on a white background um, I'm going to try different background colors I want to do a black background so lots more to come with balloon dips I'm enjoying doing those uh, what else can I show you oh I'll show you my swipe my swipe's dry everyone likes swipes don't they that's it there um, so nice and dry. This one was the one where I put the black in the center and I swiped out towards me and out towards you. So that was just with my glue and water mix this swipe. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to be doing some more swipes for you. I haven't done many lately. When I started pouring, I did a lot of swipes um, and then I moved on to the flip cups. But uh, I'll be doing some more swipes. Uh, what else can I show you? Did I show you my metallic one? I think I did, but I'll show you again because it's it's dry and it's all sparkly and shiny. Is that going to fit into the frame? Just move these back so I don't knock everything off. Okay, so that's the metallic one. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick up the the shine. So looking really pretty. I think I'm going to varnish that one. Uh, I don't normally varnish my paintings, but when it's metallics, uh, they really do stand out nice, really nicely when they're varnished. So there's that one. Okay, let's get today to today's pour. As I said, pastels. Um, and three big flip cups, I think. Sprayed them with my silicone oil. I've got three cups of white. Uh, normally I just layer one, uh, I do two layers of colors in my cups. Today I'm only gonna layer one and put white between them. Um, pouring medium today is my usual 60% glue, 30% water, 10% flow troll. Made myself a couple of little corner catches out of my card that I use to pour on so it might be easier than just using a stir stick so I've cut some of that card up and my ratio is 50 50 so one part pouring medium to one part of my global impasto paints um, leaves a little mound I'm going to come up and show you again all right let's come up and show you again it's hard getting consistency right isn't it leaves a little mound and it leaves a ribbon on top very very uh, just for a split second so hard doing this without getting my hand in the way of the light there you go bit of a, a mound little mound on a little mound little sand castle like at the beach with the wet sand radio let's do this um, I'm not going to flip over 
and tilt and then torch. I'm going to go back to my usual way because I want some bigger cells. I enjoy doing that other technique where you um, flip over and then tilt and then torch. It's okay. I've you know, got the little cells. Um, I prefer the bigger cells with much more colour. So I'm going to do that again. So I'm not putting any silicone in the whites because I want the white to fall back to the background. Uh, treadmill silicone. Uh, so I've got 30 grams of pouring medium and 30 grams of paint. So that's 60, so two drops. Because I do one drop per 30 grams or one drop per ounce. The pink, I made up a little bit of extra pink. But I'm not going to put any extra. And I also made up a little bit of extra of the terracotta because I don't want them getting lost in amongst the blues. Because that can happen. Okay, let's stir them in nicely. Really, really well. I don't want any big blobs of silicone. Uh, one of the next videos I'll show you my, my sandwich pours. I've got three that I can show you. I'll do that next time. Just give that a stir as well, check the consistency. So I've put these, the blue together with this terracotta. So I'm going to have white and then blue and terracotta and then white and then these three just to separate them from those two. I didn't want the white next, uh, the pink next to the blue because um, I don't want purple. I'll probably get a little bit of purple, that's okay. Right, so um, my first cup needs to cover all three of these. Actually, I probably don't need such a big cup. Why did I use such a big cup? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I like using these big cups because they've got a really wide mouth, which means there's more paint covering the surface of the canvas straight away. And I'm just going to really flip them over. I don't want to drag them too much, if I can possibly help it. Just a sort of a flip over. Okay, so one layer of blue. Like so. Might as well use it all up. I haven't made any extra white. Okay, and then my peachy terracotta -y colour. Made up a little bit of extra of that, as I said, so I can make that layer a little thicker. Wasn't a lot extra. It was just. 40 grams and 40 grams instead of 30 and 30, so not a lot extra. I just thought it'd be nice to have that little pop of apricot. It's kind of like my spring pour. You remember my spring swipe that I did, my spring garden? Kind of going for that look. Okay, some more white. white out you come I'll scrape it all into this one hopefully there's enough so for this size canvas this is a 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter which is my preferred size for doing my little tutorials um, can't really go too big they you know that's expensive and it's a lot of paint and then what do I do with them? Most people that want to buy my paintings are overseas. I'm in Australia, so they're overseas. And shipping for this size is about $70 to ship that. So, you know, people want to buy them, but then when they hear it's $70 for shipping, they sort of change their minds. Um, now, we'll go with the light turquoise. But I can make prints. 
Um, I can make print canvas prints and post them anywhere in the world. You know, relatively cheap. It's cheaper than me sending you an original. If anyone's interested, you can let me know and I can send you a, a canvas print. The shipping's much cheaper. Well, you know, you're getting, you're not getting an original, so. Okay, um, a bit of green, a little bit of lime, just for a little pop. You've got to have a bit of lime for your spring garden, don't you? So I don't want this too washed out looking. I know it's pastel -y, but I don't want it too washed out. That's why I've got in a decent amount of colour between my white. Uh, the thing with pastels, the reason they're a little bit tricky, uh, they tend to all be opaques. So each of these, well, I'm not sure what pink and green's going to do. Hopefully it'll be alright. Each of these colours is opaque. Um, obviously they've used, you know, red and then white, which is opaque, to lighten it. And they've used a green and a white to lighten it for the, the lime. And then obviously all the others, the blues and the turquoises, they've added white to lighten their colours. So all pastels, in my opinion, and that, it's not not gospel, might be wrong here, but what I've learned is that my pastels are all opaque, which means they're heavier, they want to sink to the bottom. And my white is also opaque, so these, all of these are opaque today. So it's important to have the silicone to um, bring those little cells with the different colours in them up to the surface. Normally your semi-transparency or transparent colours would be the ones popping to the surface and creating the rings around your cells, those pretty coloured rings around your cells. They're usually the transparent or the semi-transparent that do that. But I don't have any semi-transparent or transparent today. They're all opaque, so that's why pastels can be a little bit tricky to work with. And metallics are a little bit tricky to work with too. All right, now I'll flip these over and then I'll tell you about my colours. All right, so we have white. Uh, this one is, well, I call it sky. It's just um, basically cobalt with a bit of white. Cobalt blue and white, so that one's my light blue. Uh, shrimp is a really pretty sort of a terracotta colour, light colour or apricotish sort of colour. And peacock is, I make this one myself, it's basically turquoise and white and a little bit of cobalt. Um, I have got a video on how to make my colours if you're interested. You can watch that. This one's lime. I make that myself as well. That's just green and yellow and basically just green and yellow, that one. Um, and then rose, which is a pretty pale pink sort of a colour. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Baby pink colour. So that's my colours. All right. Got my tool organised. Put that there. The corner catches organised. Got the torch organised. Let's flip this over. And I want to get all the paint out. I don't want to leave any in there because the white. Oh, you get that messy look there. See that? Pretty much all that out now. Um, because my blue was the first one in after the white and I didn't want to leave any in otherwise I'd leave the blue and I only had it once in there, I only layered once so couldn't afford to lose any of the blue. There we 
to make sure I keep it all on the surface. So if you've got paint left in your cup, you know, it's going to be that blue that's in there, isn't it? So that was the first colour that went in after the white. So um, I can always tilt some of this off, I guess. Um, thinking about tilting the other way. No, I won't, because this is all going to be the messy end down here, and I can just get rid of that, can't I? That was better. I just have to learn how to empty these cups better when I'm doing this technique so that I don't get this messy bit here. So that was better, hey? Let's see if I can get any extra out on my corners. Some stripy blue there. What about this one? There's nothing coming out. I've emptied them. Totally emptied my cups. That's a good thing. That's what you want. You want to get all your paint out. Okay, so I'm going to torch. I do like this one. Don't like that white blob there, but as I said, I might be able to tilt that off. Let's torch. Not very much. Don't over torch, Julie. Oh, torch is giving me trouble. Doesn't want to light. It's nearly empty, so I'll have to get another one. Turn that, turn that down. Alright, nice and high, round in circles. And wait. Got a bit close there. I wish I didn't get so close all the time and get that cluster. again probably a little bit too high up but I don't I'm being extra careful I don't want to get too close Waiting, waiting. So that's got plenty. It's got plenty. I need to do some more down here, down the bottom. And a little bit more in there. that looking these blue ones coming up through the pink are cute aren't they and I've got the plain white lots of plain white ones a lot of plain white haven't I there's a lot of white in the pool that's for sure okay um, a little bit over here on the edge of the pink just here I want to see if I can get some more blue popping through there so really taking my time with the torching Whoa, a bit close there. It's all or nothing with torches, isn't it? You try so carefully not to get too many. I think that'll be all right. I'm loving this one the best with the blues and the greens. Not so much of the pink, but I'll probably tilt some of that off. All right. Um, I was just thinking I needed some more just there. Okay, I think that'll do. That will do. Right. Um, now, the other thing I want to do is normally I would do this side first. 
because it's the yucky side. But I'm going to try the opposite way and do this side first because it's got the most coverage. So that's what I'm going to try. And I'm going to use a little corner catcher that I made because I don't want to lose all my paint. But um, let's zigzag first. Zigzag. Oops, slowly. Easy does it. Looks like we're going for this corner first. So I'm going to hold that like that. It's much easier than using a stir stick. Let the paint flow into that corner. Once it's covered, I'm going to come back, bring the paint back. Before I let go. If I let go of all the paints in that corner then obviously it's all going to just run over the corner. <gasps> Look at that! Yay! Okay. All right. Control yourself Julie. Control your excitement. Radio. Let's do the same to the other side. Bring the weight of the paint back. It's about here at the moment. Let it touch the side there. Oops, don't want to lose too much over the edge. Oops, look, it's going over the edge towards you guys. All right, corner first, back. And let go. Gorgeous. And while I was doing that, that went over. Let's take that right around there, pop it there. Okay, it's squishing. I'm going to try and unsquish that centre one. Oh, it's heavy. It's about 800 grams of mixed paint on here on the sides as per normal. I always do that. And yes, it's a lot of paint, but you need that amount of paint. I'm sure you guys have tried this technique with less paint. And uh, you'll notice you just don't get the same effect. I'm trying to widen this out. It's not working. I'm going to have to see if I can get my hands under there. And Well, it's not so easy with the canvas. Easy with the card, not so easy with the canvas to stretch the paint out. What if I pick it up, put my hand under there where that bar is. There's a little timber bar there. Put my hand there and try and stretch that out. That's working, except I'm getting covered in paint. All right, that'll do. Oh, to wipe my hands off, covered in paint. And the sides are dripping on my arms while I did that. Oh, what a mess, look, covered in paint. Oh, and it fell on the floor, and now I've stood in it. All right, hang on, let me clean this up. Oh, goodness me, what a mess. Um, give me a sec, I need to wash my hands. just outside there through the, the door you go through the garage and where my studio is and into the laundry so I've got a, a sink there and I've got some fresh gloves on so I ripped them off they were just not worth saving all right well, it's looking very pastely isn't it that's what I was after now let's just hope I can get to the other side there without losing all this gorgeousness Right, um, 
loving these two not so much this bit I mean it's better now that I was able to push those cells out a little bit um, but I've got a lot of white cells in the middle there but look at this isn't this just beautiful okay let's see if I can get to my other corners and I do, I'm gonna have to tip quite a lot off because of all this which means this is all going to get overstretched so we'll see what happens looks good now but it's might not in a few minutes after I've stretched it all okay let's do this corner first there's a lot of paint there and I can worry about this side next that's going to be a trouble trouble child over there I can just see that Corners done. It's still got a little bit of that messy bit there, but it'll probably flow over once I head to this corner. Do that again and make sure you don't put it over your painting because it's drippy. Alright, let's do this corner. I'm loving this corner catcher, you guys. Much easier than a stick. I've got nowhere to hold this now. I'm going to hold my push pin underneath and then, oh, look at stretching. Don't stretch too much paint, please. Be nice. I have to get to that side. Then I have to get up into that corner. As soon as I've touched that corner, got it, come back. Actually, no, I don't like that in the corner. Just gonna let some of that go over. There we go, that's better. Come back. All right, now I just have to get this little bit here. See that bit that I was telling you about went over? I didn't even notice when it went over. Okay, done. Done, done, done. Gorgeous. Love that. Woohoo. Now I just have to bring the weight of the paint from here back down a little bit. Just a touch. Check my composition. Just, um, I just do that so that I'm balancing the stretched out cells because they're stretched out there and they're stretched out here. Um, I'm wondering if I increase my amount of paint, you know. I know it's a lot, 800. I wonder if I went like to 900. Um, and then this wouldn't be as stretched. I am going to torch up here just to get some smaller little cells. Um, but wow, I'm really loving these. The apricot in the blues. Pink's not that dominant. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of extra pink and a little bit of extra of the apricot because I knew they were going to get lost in all the blue. So I had a had the aqua and I had the light blue so this light blue is quite dominant um, but I think if you take it if you took it out it would just be you know too pale it would be too pink and apricot so it's a nice contrast maybe cut down on the the darker blue just a touch and increase the um the turquoise all right let me torch just a little bit or should I just leave it mm. Oh, it's hard to know. No, I will torch because I've got some little cells in here already. So if I get some more little ones, it's not going to really matter. Um, just a little bit. I'll go nice and high. Just a bit on the edges here. A little bit in the middle. Popping some bubbles. Bye. 
getting much up actually. I thought I would get more up. Not really. Silicone must have all come to the surface already. Rightio, let me check my corners. I need some creamy colour over on this corner. Mm, that's got green there. Where's my cream gone? Mm, that'll do. Take some of that. I only need a tiny bit. It's a pretty good match. And a little bit just on the corner there. Oops. No, I need a bigger blob actually. There we go. Put it on, let it fall down on its own. That problem is done. Oh, that edge needs a tiny little bit, and it's kind of a pale blue that it needs. There we go, that's a good match for that one. Perfect match for that one. Uh, this corner needs a little bit. It's kind of a purpley colour that it needs there. Let's put some of that there. That's it. Something with a bit of the purpley colour in it and the blue. That one can go there. How's those cells looking? Are they popping up? so much. Not a lot of cells coming up. Go again with the torch. I'm a little bit disappointed that it's overstretched here. I might actually, um, as I said, try with a little bit more paint, even though I use a lot anyway. Maybe just uh, a little bit more white. Enough torching. Skip that last little bit there. How's that corner looking? It needs just a little bit of that peachy colour. Okay. Done. We are done and dusted. Um... I guess my mix was maybe a little bit thinner than I would normally use. It's starting to, to muddy a little bit in, in some of the cells. Um, and I've also I've stretched it quite a lot, so that's probably why it's doing that. Or it could just be the fact that they're all um, opaque colours. So it's still pretty though, hey. I'm happy with it. Very pastel-y what I was wanting. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Oh, go away fly. All right, let's take you in for a close up. Here we go. It looks a little bit darker from this side, I guess. Maybe a little bit more realistic, actually, in colour from over here. Um, let's see if I can go from this way instead. That way you can see the whole thing at once. Alright, so there is bottom. Or would that be the top? Mm, not sure yet. Some little cute baby cells on the left there. These are beautiful. Look at those. Orange with the white rings. And we've got multicolours over there. Not my favourite there, right in the middle, unfortunately, where those white cells are a bit squashed. And up here we head more into the sort of a aqua, not aqua, apricot-y background. But apricot, I keep wanting to say aqua, 
apricot cells with the white around them. Those little baby white cells that have popped up. It's nice having a combination of the big cells and the little cells, isn't it? And then some more blue cells at the top there. So there we go. Happy with that. Take you around this side for uh, one last look at it. Okay. Thank you for watching again. Hope you enjoyed my pastel pour. And uh, I will see you for the next one. I want to do a black sandwich. This was my white bread sandwich. I want to do a rye bread sandwich with black layers with really bright colours. So I'll probably start working on that one next. Okay, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.